I'll call the service to order. Amen. Praise God. Good morning. Praise God. Welcome to the shepherd's house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And welcome to all of you that are here. Welcome to all of you who are joining us by YouTube out there in TV land and YouTube land or whatever. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Praise God to the shepherd's house this morning. We pray that, uh, praise God, that God has blessed your week. Praise God. And I pray that you're ready to praise the Lord. You're ready to serve the Lord. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. God's worthy this morning. Amen. Praise God. He is a worthy God. Praise the Lord. I'm Dr. Pastor Martel Finney. Amen. Praise God. It's so good to have y'all here today. Praise the Lord. We're going to start it off with open prayer. We got a lot of people that are out this morning that are sick. Praise the Lord. And we want to remember those, praise Amen. God, that are Amen. sick. Praise God this morning. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And we want to remember Ukraine. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember our service this morning. Praise the Lord. So we praise God. Going to start off with prayer. Praise God. Led by yours truly here. Praise the Lord. And then we're going to have a, a welcome scripture reading by my husband, Brother Seymour Finney. And then we're going to have a greeting, praise God, by me, I guess. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Adriana, you want to do it? Praise the Lord. A greeting. Amen. Praise the Lord. If not, I'll just do it. Praise the Lord. It's, 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 it's okay. Praise God. And then the announcements, praise God. Hallelujah. Normally it's done by Sister the Deborah, but she's out sick today. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I can do those announcements, praise God, when I get up to speak or preach or whatever, and do the sermon, praise God, amen, praise God. So let's govern ourselves accordingly to those announcements. But right now, let's bow our hearts and our heads in prayer, amen, praise God. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you today. We give you all the praise. Lord, we adore you, we adore you, we adore you. You're the master of this universe, hallelujah, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you, Father. We invite you in, God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Ghost in the midst of the service today, Lord God. We got so many out that are sick, Father God, but Jordan, you're here, Lord. You're here, Lord God. You said, what, two or three gather in your name. You will be in the midst, Lord God. And we just want to say thank you, Lord God, for always being there. Thank you for always caring. Thank you for always loving, Lord God. Bless the service today, Lord God. We come to serve you. We come to praise you. We come to lift up your name. Praise God, hallelujah, in your service today. Hallelujah, we just want to give you praise. Yes, we invite Lord. you in today. Bless us and keep us. Hold on to us, Father God. Bless every testimony that go up today, Lord God, hallelujah, that praise you and praise your name. Bless, Lord, every servant, Lord God of God. Bless every church that's standing open in the name of Jesus Christ today and preaching your word, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to bless us. We ask you to keep us. Hold us in the palm of your hand. And we love you, Lord God. Come on into your service today and bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Let God a hand of praise. Praise God. Amen. Brother Finney, come on up, sweetheart, and give us, Lord God, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. That scripture and welcoming scripture. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Shepherd House. My wife stole my line. I, she said the same thing I was going to say with two or three gather in my name. I'll be in the midst. Yeah. So it's not very many of us today, yeah. but it's enough where God is here. Hallelujah. Okay. And my opening scriptures, my opening scriptures will be coming from Joshua 10, 6 through 14, the New King James Version. Joshua 10, 6 through 14, verses 6 through 11 reads, And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp at Gilgad, saying, do not forsake your servants. Come up to us quickly. Save us. Help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the mountains had gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgad, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. Joshua therefore came upon them suddenly, having marched all night from Gilgad. So the Lord routed them before Israel, killed them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, chased them along the road that goes to Beth Horon, and struck them down as far as Ezekah and Makeda. 
And it happened as they fled before Israel and were on the descent of Beth Horon that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them as far as Ezekiel, and they died. There were more than there were more who died from the hailstones than the children of Israel had killed with the sword. Verses 12 through 14. Joshua spoke, Lord, in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, sun, stand still over Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the people had revenged upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. Verses 14. And the Lord had been no day, um, excuse me, and there had been no day like that before it or after it mm -hmm. that the Lord heeded the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. Mm -hmm. May God Amen. add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Brother Finney, thank you for that reading that scripture. Amen. Praise God. The scripture is always. The title of the, uh, the, t the sermon is coming from these scriptures today. Amen. Praise God. So um, he always read the scriptures. So thank you for that. I love to hear him read the Bible. Mm -hmm. I just, I've always loved to hear him read. He reads so excitingly. Praise God. So I thank the Lord for him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So Sister Annie normally give the a welcoming. Praise God. Hallelujah. So welcome everybody here. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to say thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's always so warm and so inviting to be in the house in the presence of God. I love it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because whatever you come to the house of God, whatever you went through during the week, praise God, it's something about when you come to the house of God, it can wash that trouble away. It can, all, it can just bless you. Praise God. Enlighten you. Praise God. So I want to welcome you into the house of God. Feel free to stump your feet. Feel free, praise God, to clap your hands. Feel free to praise the Lord. We got to praise the Lord. Don't sit down on God's praise. Amen. Praise God. I hate walking into a church and people don't want to praise God. I, I do. I don't like that. It's a sin. It's a sin. It's a dead church. It's a dead church. Thank you, Sister Jackie. It's a dead church. And we, the shepherd house, is not a dead church. We're lively stones. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're lively stones. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I want you to feel welcome. Praise God. Praise the Lord and give him glory. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Announcements. Praise God. Uh, today, praise God, we're going to have a board meeting this Saturday at 8 o'clock, 8.30. So it'll be on Skype. It's going to be on Skype. Um, I will email you and send you the agenda so you'll know, I think on Friday, that you'll know, praise God, what we're going to be discussing with you. Uh, I was going to give you a PowerPoint um, leadership class, um, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to talk business. We're going to talk business on this Skype. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. So, all right. So, govern yourselves accordingly. Praise the Lord. And uh, I guess the mandate, praise God, the mandate has been lifted on the mask. You don't have to. Praise God. Wear one. But if you feel, praise God, that you need to wear one, you won't offend nobody. Because I'm wearing, I wear mine. Praise Amen. God. When I'm out among people. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Because I know my health conditions and I know my husband's health condition. We do wear our masks. But uh, it, it, the mandate's been lifted. So if you feel, feel that you need to wear one, wear one. Praise God. And we will have some here if you don't have any. Praise God. Any other announcements? I think I covered all the announcements for right now. So govern yourselves according to these announcements. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. At this time, praise God. Hallelujah. Testimony service is open. To the ones who have a testimony, praise God. I know God has done something good for somebody in here this week. We shouldn't sit down on God's tes testimony. God giving you, who, who's making you breathe? God. If you stop breathing today, you die. <laughs> so just stand up and say, I thank God for his breath. 
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but I feel the Lord in here. I feel the Holy Ghost stirring. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Tithe and offering. Praise God. Nobody else have a testimony. Praise God. Brother Vinny, come on up and lift our tithe and offering. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We just thank God for God, how he's blessing his people. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I thank the Lord for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Made my day. Praise God. Let's bow our hearts and our heads. Praise God. Brother Finney, you want to pray over the offering for us, please? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give accordingly unto the Lord. Amen. Our tithe and our offering. Praise God. Hallelujah. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Because the Lord, hallelujah, has blessed me to give. Praise God. And the Bible says, how could a man rob God? Through tithing and offering, praise God. So let's don't rob God in tithing and offering. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me see if I can praise God. Get to my sermon here. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for the word? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. Praise God. He knows what he's doing. I want you to remember that scripture that Brother Finney quoted you. Joshua 10, 6 through 14. Joshua 10, 6 through 14. That's where the scripture text is coming from today. Praise God. We're going to talk about, praise God, hallelujah, what's happening in these scriptures. Some of the scriptures I'll be calling directly to your attention. Praise God. Amen. And uh, this message, praise God, is called instructions for the day of battle. I don't know about y'all, but how many of y'all, praise God, need instructions for the day of battle? I do. You're going to have battles, saints of God. You're going to have to fight sometimes. Sometimes you got to fight. You're going to have battles. And this year, it's a prophetic year for instructions, so we better tune our ear, our spiritual ear. This is a prophetic prophetic year for instructions. This is a prophetic year for directions. This is a prophetic year for perfection. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We better try to tune our ear. I want to be perfected because I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Praise God. I'm a child of God. I'm not perfect. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if I was perfected, praise God, I'd be in heaven right now. So I'm not perfect. Amen. I got faults. Amen. Praise God. And if anybody say they don't have one, you're a lie. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God, praise God, that I can stand before you today and say, I got faults. And I need my God to help me with those faults. It's one thing to have them, but not ask for help to correct them. And not listen to direction to correct them. And not listen to instructions to correct them. These are some instructions that were given here today. It was really a lesson to the enemy and, and for the Israelites. Praise God. In this chapter, there was, uh, if you read the beginning of it, there were five kings. Uh, and these five kings didn't know it, but they were a plan right into the hand of Joshua. Joshua in Greek Hebrew is his form of Jesus. Praise God. His name, Joshua, is also Jesus. Amen. Praise God. That's his name. Instead of having to pick them off one at a time, these kings one at a time, they had come together, and so Joshua was able to defeat all five of them at one time. See, if you listen to your enemy, praise God, you don't have to defeat some of these enemies one at a time. You can knock them all out. At one stroke. Praise God. Hallelujah. For Israel, it was just another battle in the conquest. Because, you know, Israel went through a lot of battles. If you read the book of Exodus, praise God, you'll see some of the battles that they had to go through. Amen. Praise God. The book of Leviticus also talks about the law that was given. That's what Leviticus law was given to the Israelites. Praise God. But Exodus, praise God. Hallelujah. The coming means coming out in Greek, Hebrew means coming out. Exodus means coming out. They came out. God is going to give us all an exodus out of here. One day, 
We're going to get our exodus out of here. Amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise for the exodus. Hallelujah. Our heavenly exodus. Amen. Praise God. He's going to give us a way out. Praise the Lord. So we're talking about the battles here. Praise God. A reality of life for a child of God. We do have them. We're going through them right now. Ukraine going through them right now. Praise God. But don't you think we're not going to have some fallout from that? Some kind of way. Praise God. The gas prices for me is a battle. How about you? It's a battle. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get back and forth, to and fro from the store. Praise God. To the doctor. Praise God. And to the, with the grandkids. Hauling them sometimes. I'm going to see about them. Praise the Lord. Or doing my, um, you know, just doing everyday stuff. It's a battle. That gas is a battle. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I don't know about y'all, but it, I, I leave my tank at half full. I don't let it get empty. Praise God, because it, it takes too much to fill it, praise God, when it gets empty. So I want to remind you this morning, all battles are not physical battles. They're not physical. Praise God. A great many of our battles are spiritual battles. And I tell you, those spiritual battles can be tough can be very tough. Ephesians 6 and 12 says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, high places, high positions. Therefore, our weapons must be spiritual as well. 2 Corinthians tells us, 10 and 4 says this, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. I was just praying Wednesday night, if you all can remember the ones that was on, online with me, praise God, we had prayer. Praise We have prayer every Wednesday. Praise the Lord. Amen. On Skype, if you, you, if you want an invitation, we can send you one. Just let me know your email address. And uh, we prayed Wednesday night about the strong man. See, we all got a strong man in our life that we don't want to let go of, or he don't want to let go of us. Praise God. Hallelujah. I heard my niece testify that the old enemy was trying to discourage her from coming to church. That's a strong man. That's a strong man, praise God. We need to ask God to tear down that strong man in our lives. Amen. Praise God. And uh, I thank God, praise God, that she's here. Amen. And she defied the strong man. And she denied the strong man. And she rebuked the strong man. Amen. We got to rebuke our enemy, praise God. Satan is your enemy. He ain't your friend. He'll try to entice you every which way and turn you every which way but loose. He ain't going to turn you loose. Even when you get saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. He go, evil, the Bible say, Paul, Pastor Paul even said it, when I want to do good, evil was always present. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we always got to fight. We don't fight. And I just read a scripture, praise God. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Praise God. But principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Allow me to share this morning my thoughts. Praise God on the biblical instructions for the day of battle. We need to. And I'm going to call those biblical instructions out as I get to them. Is that okay? They're from God's word. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So the lesson today, in first, number one, is a lesson about the Savior here. There are times when the Lord just comes to you and to your aid and fights your battle for you. But there's times when he wants you to fight. He don't want you to just sit there and do nothing. He wants you to pick up your faith book, your Bible, and pick up your faith, hallelujah, here and here, praise God, and fight your battle. Amen. Praise God. There are times when he moves in power and miracles on your behalf. He's done many of them for me. Many of them for me. Praise God. There are three precious truths here that I want to reveal to you today about the Savior in this day of battle today. One truth is the Savior gave his peace. You want to make note of that. Then the Savior gave his promise in the scripture. And the Savior gave his power. 
Praise God. Those two, 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 uh, three truths that's happening in this lesson today. One of the things that the, notice the word in verse 8. What did God tell Joshua? Fear them not. Fear them not. For I have what, Brother Finney? I have, y'all gonna help me preach this. I have what, Brother Finney? I've delivered them into your hands. He, God has already delivered your enemy into your hands. Did you know that? You don't have to go and try to do nothing. God has already delivered your enemy into your hands. If your heart's right. If your heart's right. I said, Lord, I said, you've got to help me here. You've got to help me if my heart's right. Put a check on my heart. Put a check on me. I won't fear things if I put a check on Martel. If I put a check in me, praise God, and line up with the, what the word says, hallelujah, amen, praise God. If the word said, be thou holy, for I am holy, then I need to be what? Holy. Come on, saints of God. Y'all got to help me preach this. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So you look at this. So he told him, fear not. This is God's instructional challenge to Israel here. Don't you fear him because I've delivered him into your hands. I'm telling you right now, before you go into your battle, before you go into the fight, I've already delivered your enemy into your hands. We got to believe that. God was just reminding Joshua that he was still in control of the situation. God was in control of your situation. Nothing, nothing, saints, if you don't hear not, no more of this sermon today, I want you to hear this and look at me very well. Even in YouTube land out there, hear me. Nothing in your life, no trouble in your life, no storm in your life, no enemy in your life can afflict you, can do anything to you unless it has been sifted through the nail-scarred hands of Jesus Christ's approval. Amen. Nothing can come against you unless it has been come through the approval Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when he approves your storm of life, when your storm of life come to you, God had to approve it. Now, if God approved it, if he approved that storm in your life or that trouble that's in your life, he's in control. He's in control. He's in control of it. Praise God. God never promised me from Genesis to Revelation, as I read the Bible many times, he has never promised me that I would not have a storm. Never promised me that I wouldn't have a trial. But what he did promise me, he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Hallelujah. I will be with you to the ends of the world. Hallelujah. We got to remember that. He's in control. He's in control. Read Job. When the devil came with the sons of God for the altar, God asked him, said, where are you going, Satan? He said, I'm walking to and fro. Seeing who I can devour. Seeing who I can devour. I won't devour a liar right now. Mm -hmm. I won't devour uh, uh, Sister Jackie right now. But you know what God is saying? And you know, and Satan knows it too. Satan told the Lord, he said, I want Job, but you got a hedge around that old boy. I can't touch him. You got a hedge around him. I can't touch him. God's got a hedge around us, saints of God. Amen. He got a hedge of protection around us. Amen. Praise God. You best better believe that. It's in the word of God. Praise God. We're going to talk about it in just a minute. Praise God. So may I remind you this morning, praise God, hallelujah, that he's still in control. He's still on the throne. He's still, praise God, the prince of peace. You're in your storm, praise God. Hallelujah. He never promised you he wasn't going to go through the storm, but he said, but I'll take you through the storm. Amen. Praise God. For those who will walk by faith and not by sight, the Lord still gives peace. He still gives peace and he passes understanding. Philippians 4 and 7 says this. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds through Christ Jesus. Hmm. 
He will brand you with his peace, saints of God. God will brand you with his peace. When I say brand you, he will brand you. Satan, know the, Satan knew the mark that was on Job. He knew God had a hedge mark on it. God will brand you with that same mark. Amen. Trust me on that. Praise God. John 14, 27 says this. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not as the world give it. God ain't going to give you the peace as the world give it. You might think everything's great right now, but uh-uh. God will give you that peace that will surpass all understanding. He'll give you that deep down peace. He'll give you that peace even in the midst of your storm, praise God, that you can walk on water. He'll give you that unction, praise God, that you got everything, praise God, under your feet. He'll give you that kind of peace, praise God. He's given it to me, and I know that I'm no better than you. Praise God, hallelujah. I've gone through storms of life, praise God, hallelujah, that I didn't think, praise God. I don't look back on them. I don't know how world I come out of them. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know about y'all, praise the Lord. Amen, praise God. I remember when we were back, praise God, early in our marriage, praise God. We were struggling, trying to, trying to uh, make the grocery bill. We weren't making that much money. Praise God, but we knew that the Lord would make a way. But before I got saved, saints, uh, 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 saints, praise God, hallelujah, I tell you, I went through some stuff. I didn't know how, praise God, how I was going to overcome. Amen. Praise God. My husband and I, pray, praise God, we went through some stuff. Praise God. But God saw a way. Our mothers died the same year. That was a tough year. I never will forget that year. Praise God. Our moms passed away. His mom passed away, I think, in, was it November? I think mine uh, passed in February. Praise God. That was tough. And had a young family. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But wasn't making that much money. Praise God. We had to fly back for the funerals. Praise God. Hallelujah. He flew back for his mom's funeral. I mean, we were struggling. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I had to fly. I had to take my mother's body back to Louisiana and bury her. I mean, it, we was eating soup. Praise God, but we had to do it with a young family. Praise God, hallelujah, amen, praise God. I had the help of my brothers, praise God, to help with the funeral expenses, praise God, amen, praise God. But I thank God, praise God. My mother was living with me when she passed away. It was tough. It was tough. I took her in, praise God. It was tough. Amen, praise God. And thank God for my husband, praise God, standing by my side. Amen, that's what, that's what husband and wives are for. We in for it for life, ain't we, saints? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We in for it for life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I look at this lesson today. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Don't let your heart be afraid. Back then, praise God, before I got saved, I was afraid. I was afraid we praise God, hallelujah, we, we wasn't going to make it. Praise God, hallelujah. We, 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 had, we didn't have a lot of debt, but it was hard back then, trying to raise three kids. They needed stuff. Amen. We weren't big spenders. Amen. We were budget people, very conservative with our money. Praise God, hallelujah. But it was, it was a struggle. Praise God, hallelujah, amen. Please remember that the Lord didn't save you for you to be agitated or worried. I had to realize that. He didn't save me to be agitated or worried about stuff. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. He doesn't mean for you to tremble and fear at your enemy either. Don't back down from your enemy. Praise God. Hallelujah. You stand your ground. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says this. Trust. Uh, this is an a instructional verse here, so you might want to write this down. This is one of the instructions that God gave. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, 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 and John 14 and 27 was an instructional scripture as well. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That was John 14, 27. That was your first instructional, first instruction. The second instruction, Proverbs come from three, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And it says this, trust in the Lord. That's an instruction. That's a command. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean, I like this one. Lean not, lean not to your own understanding. How many of us do that all the time? I want to go and figure that thing out for me. Well, I don't know. I can't do that because I got this going on. I, I, 
can't go this way, Lord, because I only got this much money. When the Lord told me to pastor a church and build it, I said, Lord, how am I going to do that? And I ain't got no money. I ain't got a dime. And where the members going to come from? Y'all in here. Y'all in here. And I just got word the other day, the money's coming. The funding is coming. The funding is coming. The funding is coming. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. The money is coming. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I thank God. I thank God. Praise God. I thank God. I don't know about y'all, but I want to shout right now because I know what's been downloaded into the account. I want to thank God. He's on his way to building his church and paying for it debt free. I don't know about y'all, but we ought to praise God. We ought to praise God. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I feel, I feel the Holy Ghost moving. I feel him. Praise the Lord. Trust in him. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. I want him to direct my path. I, Marti I don't want Martil directing my path. I ain't, I ain't had enough education. I ain't had enough learning. I, ain't, I don't have enough book, book knowledge to direct my path. Did you hear me? Have not. Praise God. I'm, st I'm, a, I'm a student of the book, of the Bible. Hallelujah. I don't have enough knowledge, and I will never have the knowledge that God has for me. Amen. Praise God. And the children of God, we need to remember this, that everything that happened in our lives has to first pass through God. It has to be approved through the nail-scarred hands of Jesus Christ. It has to come through his death. Praise God. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28 says this. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. And to those who are called according to his purpose. I'm called according to God's purpose. Not my purpose. I, I, you know, I said, Lord, I said, you know, the, uh, 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 you got to qualify me. You call me, you got to qualify me. He has to qualify you for the calling. Praise God. Hallelujah. I co-pastored for many years. I co-pastored for many, many years. I've been in ministry for 40 some years. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that. But now he said, Pastor. Now I'll be 70 years old this year. I said, Lord, I'm old now. <laughs> and you calling me the pastor? It's time for me to retire. Ain't no retirement. Come on, Sister Baker. Ain't no retirement when it comes to God's work. You can't retire out of God's kingdom. You can't tire out of his work because we are workmen that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Praise God. That's scripture. Praise God. Hallelujah. We got to serve the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want you to look at your verse here. Look at your Bible. Right now, I want you all eyes on this verse. Don't look at me. All eyes on this verse. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know not that all things work together for the good for those who love God. It's going to work out for your good. Whatever your storm's going, you're going through right now, it's going to work out for your good, for, for the Lord, because you love God. To those you are called according to his purpose. The Bible said, make your calling and election sure. I'm telling you, you have to walk with God on that. I had to make my calling in my election sure. Amen. God, you sure you calling me? Huh. I had to look at that thing. I said, Lord, I don't have this. I don't have that. I told the Lord everything I didn't have. Everything I didn't have. Everything I didn't have. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have this. You liars are laughing at me. I, 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 everything. I said, Lord, I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have this. I don't have that. Lord, I, I don't know how. I don't know how. I've never done that. I've never done that. You know what the Lord told me? I've done it all. I had to shut up. I had to stop my excuses. He's done it all. He's done everything that I haven't done. He got everything that I don't have. Oh, glory to So I have no excuse. 
The Savior gave his promise here in verse 8. He also gave his promise. The Lord didn't stop just with uh, a word of encouragement. He gave them the promise of absolute victory. I would like to say that I still believe the Lord never saved you for, uh, for you to be defeated. God didn't save you to be, let your enemy defeat you. When he saved you, he did so with the promise that you could walk in his victory. 1 Corinthians 15. Verses 57 says this. I'm a woman of the word. I love the word. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says this. But thank be to God who gives us victory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 37 says this. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. God loves us. We are more than conquerors. You look at your neighbor and say, I'm more than a conqueror. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. Praise God. I got victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God will enable you to live above your circumstances, saints of God. I know he did me. My circumstances was poor. Praise God. I come from a poor family. I remember my mom, praise God, back in the day, praise God. I don't know if y'all remember them black and white awkward shoes that we had to, we had to wear. Them ugly old big... <laughs> And of orthodox, huge, yeah. So I, 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 sh I had a pair of them, praise God, hallelujah. Black and white, I think it was. Yeah, black and white. And so when I wore the uh, bottom out, she would go, praise God, and get the thickest cardboard that she could find. And she would cut it up and put it in that shoe so I can get some more wearing out of that shoe. That's a mother, praise God, that knew how to stretch the dollar. That's how I look at it now. I didn't look at it like that then. I said, you sent me to school in cardboard. You know, but she knew how to stretch a dollar. We had, back in, the, back in the day, praise God, I don't know if you all remember this, praise God. They used to sell flour by the sacks, and they had those uh, cotton croco sack type things. Some of them were made like out of cotton, and then some of them made out of croco sacks. I call them croco sacks. You know, praise God. Burlap. Amen. Burlap. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. But my mama, we were poor. And I didn't know we were poor. And when she got done and she emptied that flour in a big can, she emptied that flour in a big metal can. It sat in the kitchen underneath the table all the time. Praise God. And you know what she did? After she emptied that flour in that can, or whatever, the meal, whatever, she emptied in the can, she will take those sacks that that flower came in and make pillowcases out of it. And sheets. Sew them together make sheets. Hey, that's a, that's a mother that knows how to make his meat. That's a mother, praise God, hallelujah, that used every resource that God gave her for her family. That's what we got to do. We can make it, thanks of God. We can make it. Praise God. Some of us may have to, I may have to start back picking cotton. Amen. And the economy don't look good. They ain't looking that good, praise God, in some places. Amen. Praise God. It's a wild that we could even get a car, a new car on, on a car lot. So we need to think about that. Praise God. If you got to go back to picking cotton, I'll do that. Praise the Lord. I don't have a problem with it. Amen. It was honest living. Amen. Praise God. God has a way, saints of God. If you listen to his instructions, he'll have a way for you to overcome your enemy. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Savior and his power. The Savior gave his power here. In this verse 9 through 14, you'll read it. Praise God. Hallelujah. He moved in a great manifestation of supernatural power on Joshua's number half. He moved in two ways. How did God move for Joshua and him? He moved in two ways. He moved in the hailstorm. Look at verse 11. Brother Finney read it. It happened. I'm going to read verse 11. It happened as they fled before Israel and were on the descent of Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven and on them as far as Ezekiah, and they died. They were more who died from the hailstones than the children of Israel killed with the sword. God used a hailstone to deal with the enemy here. Did you know God can use the weather, praise God, against your enemy? Did you know God can use the stars and their courses against you, against your enemy? He controls the stars and their courses. The star can't go to the north unless God say, move to the north. 
A lot of us are stargazers. We look at the Big Dipper and all of that. Praise God. I'm not a stargazer. <laughs> Amen. I'm not. I'm just not. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I, I, I just like to study the word. Praise God. How, and see what it says about what's going on. But God controls the stars and their courses. Praise God. I want you to look at this because I'm going to get to a, a point of the story where you really, praise God, might not believe what God did here. God still, praise God, saves and defeat on your behalf. God will enable you to live above your circumstances. The Savior gave his promise here in the word. God moved in hailstones, and it happened, praise God. Hallelujah. He moved in a hailstone. Job 38, 22, and 23 says this about that verse. How hast thou entered into the treasure of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasure of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? I reserve this hailstone for your behalf. Amen. You fussing about Katrina? We, 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 we complain about the storms of life. We complain about Katrina. We complain about uh, uh, the COVID. This, this, is a pan, this pandemic, you call it a pandemic. I call it a plague. I'm looking at the Bible, how the Bible describes it. Ain't no cure for it. When the plagues happened back over in the Ten Commandments, in, in Moses' day, praise God, there was no cure for it. The only cure was God. Amen. The only one that could stop the plague was God. And the plague hit everybody except the one they went to Goshen. God said, you can't come to Goshen plagues. You can't enter here. Praise God. Hallelujah. The only plague that entered Goshen was the death angel. And it couldn't enter the house Praise God, if it had the blood applied over the lintel and doorposts, it could not enter in. So that's how God protects his people. Have you applied the blood of Jesus Christ in your life? I march around my house constantly, all the time, pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I, I go room to room and talking to the Lord. I talk to the dishes. Tell them how good God is. Praise God. You know what you're doing? You're blessing, you're not only blessing your house, you're blessing yourself, and not only are you blessing yourself, you're speaking to that enemy to get out. you letting him know where you stand. you let him know that you're not going to tolerate him. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's how we do it, saints of God. Listen to this. God moved another way. Look, this is how he moved in another way. He moved, okay, with the hailstone. He moved in the heavens. God is moving in the heavens on your behalf today. Here we see the Lord perform in verse 12 through 14. Of that scripture, Brother Finney read, here we see the Lord perform the greatest miracle ever recorded in regards to the physical world. I want, this is where I want to get to. God stopped the sun in the heavens and extended the daylight hours for Joshua and his army to finish the battle. We just set the clocks up this morning one hour early. But God stopped the sun and the moon and the stars in their courses for them to finish the battle. Yes, Who else can stop the sun and the moon? The, 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 the scientist says that earth uh, 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 twists and moves on an axle. Yes. Let me talk about that. Let me talk about that. The passage has brought much ridicule on the Bible. This passage has brought much ridicule from uh, unbelievers on the Bible. Some believe that this proves the Bible is uninspired. That's wrong. That's a lie. Because science has long since proven that the earth rotates around the sun and that the sun does not move. However, I would like to just make a few statements here about that miracle. Literally, the sun hung at the peak of the sky in this verse when God did this. Ancient history report supports this claim that we are day behind, a whole day behind. The calendar supports this claim. Here's how they do it. Using an ancient Chaldean calendar system, which was built around lunar and solar eclipse. Y'all heard about the solar eclipse. You count forward to this day and find that this missing day fell on a Tuesday, July 22nd. However, if we count backwards, using our system of reckoning days, 
we will find that it even happened on July 22nd, but it was on a Wednesday. There's a day missing. An entire day is missing. Either way you go, an entire day is missing. And verse 13 of this Bible that Brother Finney read to you proves it. This is what it says in verse 13. He read it. The sun stood still. How many of you ever known the sun stand still for 24 hours? And the moon stopped. You know, if you go and look at the moon, praise God, you can see it moving. You can't look at the sun now and do that because sun too bright. It's the moon stopped till the people had revenge on their enemy. God took away a whole day, stopped the sun, stopped the moon, praise God, so God's people can take revenge on the enemy. I'm telling you, you got a power for God. Hallelujah. Y'all ought to give God a hand of praise. God is worthy. God is more powerful than you even begin to know. Praise God. Hallelujah. I've never known a scientist can stop a whole day. I've never known a biologist can stop a whole day. Amen. Praise God. I never know a physicist can stop a whole day. Amen. Praise God. I never know a woman that can give birth, praise God, a child unless she had sex with a man. Mary did. Mary did. Hallelujah. Praise God. I never known our scientists, our biologists can turn water into wine. You ought to give God another hand of praise. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God gave instructions to Israel to defeat their enemies here. There are, in, there are times, praise God, when the Lord will supernaturally intervene in your problem, in your situation, in your in your life, in your home, praise God. Hallelujah. I know God has intervened in supernatural in my children's lives many times. Many times. Even now that they're grown, they don't tell mom and dad everything. We don't, we dumb. We don't know nothing. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. But you know, God comes and whispers to us and let us know, pray for your son. Pray for your son. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We, we, we called up one in the room yesterday morning before he went back to Spokane. Let's pray. We pray, praise God. I know it's financially hard for him right now. He's got a family, young family, because we've been through this. Praise God, hallelujah. We know, praise God, and amen, praise God, that he's trying to make a living here, but he lives in Spokane with his wife. We know it's hard, and that gas is not easy on him. So we, we, we pray, we pray. Call him in the room. Let's pray before you leave out. Let's pray before you go to Spokane. Early yesterday morning, that's about four or something. Praise God, hallelujah. But I know it's a struggle for him. Praise God. And I know they probably want how mom and dad know. We old fuddies. We, they don't tell us nothing. Right, Joe? They don't tell us nothing. We don't know nothing. Bessie, we don't know nothing. Amen. Brother Finney, we don't know. We don't know. Praise God. But God show short. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We pray for our loved ones. We pray for our children. I love them. I want to see them do good. Amen. Praise God. There are times when the Lord will intervene uh, uh, supernaturally. God has shared things with me, praise God, when people are talking about me. Come on. He'll do it. When people are talking about you, praise God, sometimes, God, let me hear the conversation. <laughs> and then when you see them, they can't see you. They can't, they can't look at you. They can't look at you straight. Because the Lord already revealed it to you what they're talking about and what they're saying. You know, if you live it right, God will do that for you. He'll let you know your, who your enemy is. Praise God. He'll let you know how to treat them too. Because you can't get down on their level and treat them like they treat you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to pray for them. Praise God. I have seen, praise God, the saints heal. Praise God. Many times, saints of God. I've seen uh, uh, diseases, praise God, uh, diseases heal by sending a word of prayer. I have seen drunken people saved and sobered up immediately. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I have seen drug addicts immediately released from the power of drugs and made clean. I have seen lives changed miraculously uh, by supernatural interventions of God. Amen. Praise God. I've seen the Lord move in response, praise God, to the need of his child. Praise God. I've seen God move mountains, praise God, that needed to be gotten out of the way, praise God, hallelujah, so God can intervene. I've seen mountains shift. Please understand, praise God, he doesn't always move like that, though, saints. I have seen drunk people delivered, but 
They still, praise God, was drunk when they left. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have seen others uh, who uh, struggle with sin, praise God, after they was even saved. Hallelujah. See, God moves in mysterious ways. Sometimes, praise God, there's some people saved, but they still struggle with sin. Praise God. Hallelujah. I've seen saints heal that have seen others die with the disease. I've seen some heal of diabetes, but I've seen some die with the disease. My mother was one of them. Praise God. I've seen people drunk. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And get saved immediately. My husband's one of them. He'll tell you. He come home drunk one night. At least I thought he was drunk. He come home one night. Praise God. This is when we were young. Praise God. We're living out in Richland. Little old two-bedroom apartment. Praise God. He come home. Praise God. I said, oh, Lord. He been out drinking with the fellas. He been out drinking with the fellas. Bam it on the door. Let me in. Let me in. I don't have my key. Let me in. I get up. Let him in. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. He'll tell you this. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you know what? When he got in that door, he said, I'm saved. I'm saved. He had been to church and I didn't know. He had been to church. Uh, uh, Bishop uh, Irvin was preaching. Praise God. I didn't wrestle him. And never forget it. Praise God. Amen. I said, oh, Lord. He been out with the fellas. He come in here bamming on this door. Let me in. I don't have my key. Well, when he got in there, he said, honey, I'm saved. I got saved tonight. I got saved. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I looked at him. I said, oh, I'm waiting on it to come. <laughs> I got saved. I got saved. Praise God. God changed me, honey. God changed me. He hugged me. Praise God. God changed me. God saved me. Praise God. Richard Irvin was preaching. Praise God. And my soul, praise God, he rejoiced. And I mean, I tell you what tears at that point come down my eyes. Because I had got it saved. I was seeking and tearing for the baptism of the Holy Ghost at that time. Praise God. And when he come that night, my whole life just lifted. Knowing now, praise God, that I got a husband. That is now a saved man. That we can live together in holiness. Oh, glory to God. The Bible says, praise God, thanks to God, don't be unevenly yoked. Praise God. I thank God, praise God, that I tarried for the Lord for my husband to get saved and changed. Praise God. He put down the bottle from that day to this one. He never, ever picked up the bottle. He never, ever wanted anything to drink. He never thirsted for it. Praise God. It completely ratified him. Completely changed his life. Completely. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I thank God. Praise God. Thank Amen. He asked, he says, honey, can you forgive me? I said, baby, yes. I said, we all got faults. I had a cigarette problem. Mine was smoking Salem lights. And I tell you, when I, didn't, when I couldn't get a hold of that cigarette, that enemy, praise God, made me want to go to the store at night to buy some. Amen. He wouldn't let me go, praise God, out at night, praise God. So I had to go around the house looking for cigarette butts. Come on, Saint, that's how bad I had it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I was smoking almost a pack a day. Praise God. But God changed me. God took the cigarette taste out of my mouth. Praise God. Hallelujah. And delivered me from smoking cigarettes. I, never, I didn't drink. Never done, never done drugs. Praise God. But I love to smoke and I love to dance. But I didn't change partners now. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I can dance with the Holy Ghost all day long. And don't get tired. Amen. Praise God. Let's go back to this. I'm going to try to finish this up. Lesson for the saints here today. I have prayed for people. Listen to this. I have prayed. I have, have you ever prayed the centurion prayer? Anybody in here ever prayed the centurion prayer? Remember the centurion, praise God, hallelujah. He met Jesus, praise God, when Jesus was coming out of Capernaum. He met Jesus, praise God, and he said, my servant lies sick at home, praise the Lord. And he says, uh, you know, uh, but Lord, don't, don't, don't go there because I'm a man under, under, uh, under control. You know, I got people that I tell to go here and I tell to go there. He said, don't go there. He said, just send the word. Just send the word, Holy Ghost. Just send the word. So this is what I pray to send to you and pray over people that I can't physically go and visit. Sometimes you can't go visit everybody. As a minister, you cannot do it. Even as a child of God, you can't go visit everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. I used to go into nursing homes, hospitals before the pandemic. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, pray for people all the time, just about every other day. 
Praise God. It's a, it's a busy ministry. And so um, I used to go in people's residence and, pr and pray for them. Praise God. And they place in their homes. Praise God. So the centurion asked Jesus this question. The, the centurion asked Jesus, Lord, if you but say the word, and my servant will be healed. Other words, Lord, if you just send the word to my servant, Amen. he will be healed. There's no distance in prayer, saints of God. This is what I'm trying to get to. God can handle your enemy far off. You hear, but he can handle him far off. Amen. Praise God. The lesson for the saints here, praise God, is that we must see, praise God, Israel uh, itself, how they engage the battle here. We got to engage the battle as well. We must control. Listen to this. I want to give you these things. I want to give you some pointers. We must control our enemy, number one. Like Joshua did. He controlled the enemy. You know how Joshua controlled the enemy here? Brother Finney read it, 6 through 18 here. Notice that these five kings tried to hide themselves in a cave. And when they were discovered, Joshua ordered the cave to be sealed up Preventing the kings from escaping. When you got saved, God changed you just like that. Your old sinful nature is still alive. Your old sinful nature is still alive. It has to be crucified daily. That's right. That part of your, your uh, that part of you that loves sin in the world is still active today. You got to crucify your flesh every day. I got to tell you, know why, saints of God, there's different types of sin. And you know what, I, I had to really get the grasp this. There's different types of sin. You have to crucify yourself every day. There's sins of omission. There's sin of commission. There is secret sins. There are intentional sins. Praise God. There's different types of sin. There's unknown sins. Sometimes you see it and you don't know you're doing it because you ain't read the word enough for one thing. You ain't prayed enough for the Holy Ghost to talk to you about it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Somebody else say amen to that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We all praise God. Even since I've been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, I have sinned, but I've had to repent. You know why? I'm so offended. You saved, sanctified, filled. Yes! The devil plays with the mind. And if I'm slacking in prayer, that's a sin. That's what my battleground is. I don't know what yours is. Yours might be, ain't, ain't gave up the ball yet. I don't know, but praise God. But I have to praise God. Guard my mind with the word of God. Let the Lord put a watch before my mind, put a watch before my eyes, and put a watch on my lips. Because sometimes you can let them uh, loose lips that sink ships come out. You can let them old words come back out. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, and we can't do that. We can't revert that. So we have to crucify our flesh daily, saints of God. Listen to this. Our enemy, the flesh, hides itself within us and runs out into the open from time to time. Get mad. Let somebody cut you off in traffic. That old tongue wants to take over. That little pink beast in your mouth wants to take over. That's where road rage comes from. That little pink beast. We got to put a bridle and a bit on it. Put a Holy Ghost bit on that, praise God. It may be a problem with, with the tongue uh, that will come out from time to time. It may be anger. It may be hatred that come out. It may be prejudice. It may be lust. It may be corruption. It may be negative criticism. I've been, ooh, Lord, I, I, in the, more, as, uh, the more I grow in the Lord, I hate to sit around people who have negative, 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 negative. They don't have nothing good to say. They don't have nothing good to say about themselves, about nobody else. Whatever that thing may be in your life, that sinful nature must be controlled by the God, by the Holy Ghost. I want you to listen to this in temperance. Talk about temperance here in the Bible. This is a gift that we all need. We need to pray about it. Temperance, Galatians 5.23 says, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. There's no law against temperance. There's no law. The word means self-control. It refers to a person who, who is the master of himself or herself. I am not the master of myself. I need temperance to control my temper, to control my tongue, control my action, to control my goings and my comings. I need temperance. 
Praise God. First Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says, do you know not that your body, listen to this now, if you're a child of God, did you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Listen to this. Praise God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 6, 19 to 20 says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own? For ye were bought with a price, hallelujah. Therefore glorify God in your body, in your spirit, which is God's. You are a temple of the Holy Ghost. You belong to God. Listen to his instructions to guide you. We must also confront our enemies. Joshua locked these people in these five kings in a cave, but he confronted them. This is how he did it. Notice that after the battle had been won, Joshua came back to that cave, bought these five kings, and humiliated them by having his prince to put their foot on their neck. You can put your foot on the enemy's neck today, saints of God, if you're living right. We can put the enemy on our feet if we're living right. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to tread. I'm ready to tread on troubles. I'm ready to tread, praise God, hallelujah, on any enemy, praise God, to try to come against the child of God. Amen. We need to, con we need to have ourselves under control at all times, under guidance of the Holy Ghost. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. This is God's body. It's God's temple. Praise God. Hallelujah. Spiritually speaking, we need to do the same thing. Every person in this room, praise God, know what sin is hiding in your life. Every person in this room, every person in this world, every person in this community, know what sin is hiding in our life. Let the Holy Ghost tread there and give you some instructions how to get rid of it. That's what we need to do, praise God. The only way for you to get absolutely permanent victory over these things in your life is to confront them. Don't be afraid to confront your enemy, praise God, of the flesh. I know I had to do it with cigarette smoking. I had to do it with, I love juking. I love juking. We called it juking back in that day. I loved to go out and dance. Me and my brother, boy, we would, we would tear up a floor. He's dead and gone, praise God. Amen, praise God. But we would tear up a floor. I loved it. I loved it. And I love smoking cigarettes. I don't have that love anymore. I don't have that love. That, lo that love for that has been crucified. If I smell cigarette smoke now, my lungs start uh, doing funny things because it's thinking that I'm trying to punish them again. You know, it just does funny things. But I thank God, praise God, for, for that feeling that I get because that's probably keeping me from it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't, 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 don't be so quick to put down your storm. That storm been, been allowed for you to go through for to help you in some way, somehow, to overcome some things. Did I make that clear? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Place your foot on the neck, praise God, of your enemy in the name of Jesus. Place your foot on your enemy, praise God, and proclaim your victory. We must also conquer our enemies. How do we conquer our enemies? Praise God. Hallelujah. We take steps to ensure the victory, praise God, to put the enemy to death. I just want to remind you, praise God in my closing, that your flesh is good for nothing. It's good for nothing. Praise God. Your old sinful nature and your old fleshy lusts are good for nothing other than the fires of judgment of hell. The only way for you, praise God, to overcome the victory, praise God, hallelujah, is you put flesh to death daily. Put flesh to death daily. Here's an instruction scripture. Here's another instruction scripture. That's the title of the lesson. Instruction how to overcome your enemy in the battle. Colossians 3, 5. Colossians 3, verse 5 says, Therefore put to death your members. Oh, my God, I love this. Put to death your members. Not my members of the church. Praise God. Put to death your members, which are on earth. Here's your members. I'm going to name your members. Your members, our members, fornication, uncleanness, those are our members. Passion of evil desires, those are our members. Convection is wanting what Sister Baker back there got. Always wanting, praise God, what Sister Singleton got. Wanting and idolatry, those are our members. 
This is something that we do. We, we just do. Praise God, because we got flesh. Notice Pastor Paul toward life. Galatians 2 and 20 says this. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, not I. Praise God. I like this scripture. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. Hallelujah. Of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Am I closing? Be steadfast. Be steadfast in your walk. You know, the Bible says any man or woman put his hand to the gospel plow is not fitting. If they turn back, it's not fitting for the kingdom of God. Once you put your hand to the gospel plow, don't turn back. Don't. I like what Sister Baker said. You, you ain't no retirement in the Lord. Ain't no retirement in the Lord. Praise God. I'm going to preach Sister Adriana until I die, until God call me home to rest. I'm going to be his servant in the most high God. That's why I want to be. That's my desire. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Our battle will confront us daily. Our battles will confront us daily. Whatever your problem is going to confront you daily. And let me tell you something. Don't let your problems show you up. Don't let your problems show you up. The Bible said, be careful for your sins will what? Find you out. Amen. Praise God. Don't let your problem show you up. But you put your foot on the neck of your problem like he did the five kings here. Praise God. There may be a battle. And there's some battles are easier than some battles. For those who may be waiting on easier times to begin serving the Lord, you may never have an easier time. May that never come. You are not promised one day, praise God, upon this earth. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Amen. Praise God. He said he'll be with you, but it ain't promised to you. Praise God. The only day I have to fight my battle is today. I'm fighting my battle today. There are some of you that may be watching. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. YouTube, whatever that may have never been saved out there, never been saved. If you to die today, where would you go? If you die today, where would you go? Have you turned back to the Lord? Have you came back to say, God, I'm ready to come back to you? I told, my, I told my sons, I tell them this all the time. Turn back. I said, what was you raised at? They'll tell you. They'll tell you quick. I was raised in church. I was thinking, no. They're raised in church. Praise God. Hallelujah. I remember Aaron, praise God, come to church, sister singing. She had him up underneath the pew on a blanket. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when they get grown, praise God, they, 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 they stray away from God. But I told the Lord, I said, now remember your promise, Lord. You told me. If you raise them, praise God, in the Lord, they'll come back to you. They'll come back to you. Praise God. They know the way. They've been told the way. Praise God. We must fight our battle daily. We cannot let down the bloodstained battle of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pro Proverbs 27 and 1 says this. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what the day may bring forth. And that is so true. I don't know what's going to bring forth today. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know what's going to happen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Today, praise God, is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Praise God. Call upon the Lord. Isaiah 55 and 6 says this. Call upon the Lord while he is near. There's coming a day, saints of God, he ain't going to be so near. Crying time and forgiving time and repenting time is now. Because when Jesus come back, praise God, hallelujah, and I was looking at that word the other day, praise God, in Revelations. When Jesus come back, praise God, you know, a lot of people think he's going to come back that little meek, that little lowly, Lamb of God, loving, preaching on Mount Sinai, preaching on, on praise God on the Mount, praise God. He's going to come back and just walk the streets and like he did, praise God, hallelujah, amen. And, and when he was a young man, praise God, going to walk the streets and witness to people and 
talk to people and heal people and feed the 5,000, praise God, bread and fishes, praise God. You know, a lot of people think that he's going to come back like that. A lot of them think he's going to come back. Praise God, hallelujah. No, he's not coming back like that. If you read the book of Revelation, the Bible said he's going to come back, hallelujah, and said his hair going to look like a flame, like, look like lamb's wool. Amen, praise God. Say his eyes going to look like flames of fire. And say his feet going to look like burnished brass. It's in the book. Don't look at me strange, praise God. It's in the book. It's in the Bible. His feet going to look like burnished brass. Say amen. Say his sword going to be in his hand, praise God, hallelujah. And the Bible says he's going to have his vesture on. And say the vesture going to be dipped in blood, praise God. And the Bible says he's going to have a name on his thigh that no man know but he himself, praise God. And it's going to be the war and the sword in the name of God, hallelujah. The Bible Bible says he's going to come back with a diehard vengeance. Do you know he's going to kill and destroy, praise God? They said he's going to come back and kill so many people that Columbia River, praise God, hallelujah, won't be able to hold the blood, praise God, of the men he's going to slaughter. The unbelievers he's going to slaughter. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. He ain't going to be that same. He ain't going to have the same look. Praise God, hallelujah. He's going to come back with a diehard vengeance at the unbelievers of this world, at the spiritual wickedness of this world, he's coming back to deal with it. Amen. Praise God. I like what the word says. Praise God. We can't add to this book and we can't take away. If you add to the book, he's going to add the plagues that's been. I want, I want y'all to listen to this. I want you to hear this. Hear this. And if you don't hear nothing else, hear this. If you add to this book, it's in Revelation chapter 22. If you add to this book, he said, I'm going to add the plagues that are in this book. What's going on now in the world? Plagues! I want you to think about it because people are trying to add and change the B-I-B-L-E. You're trying to add and change the Bible to fit your, fit your, fit your sin, fit your need, fit your, he said lean not to your own understanding. Didn't he say that? Then he also said, you add he said, you can't take away from this book. He said, because if you take away from this book, I'm going to take you out of the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't want my name removed out of the Lamb's Book of Life. In my closing today, if you feel, praise God, hallelujah, you need to repent. If you feel that you're not listening to the instructions of the Lord very carefully, praise God here. Amen, praise God. I had another one here. Instructions. Three more here I'm going to give you. Malachi, Micah 6 and 8 says, Hath not showed thee, O man, hath not I showed thee, O man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly? We have to do justly. We have to love. We have to have mercy. We are to walk humbly with the Lord. That's a commandment. Micah. Six through eight. M I C A H. Okay. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, another command, another instruction that God has given us. In closing here, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. I love this. Because see, some of us, we run half cock with a thing. Hear the whole conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, a commandment again, He's giving you. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That's scripture. That's scripture. Fear God. Is he giving you a command to fear him? For this is the whole duty of man. Okay, my last commandment, last instruction that God wants you to have, to fight your enemy in the day of battle. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, it commands and instructs us to do this. Cast down evil. Remember I told you the battlefield is here? This is where mine mostly hit. Praise God. Cast down imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's the last one. Those instructions, praise God, that I believe that God has given us. Saints of God, we're in a battle right now. 
You know, we, you, 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 have you ever thought about, praise God, that war over there in Ukraine that's going on right now? Have you ever thought about them battles sometime might hit the United States on our soil? I want you to be grateful to the Almighty God that that has not happened. That has not happened. Israel been through something. Praise God. We need to pray for Ukraine people. We need to pray for Israel. The Bible tells us to pray. Don't cease praying for Israel. Read Genesis chapter 12. Praise God. The Israel is blessed. And God said in Genesis chapter 12, he that bless Israel, I will bless. Praise God. Hallelujah. We need to bless Israel. We need to pray for Israel constantly. In my conclusion here today, praise God, we all eventually, the battles will be over one day for all of us. It'll be over one day for all of us. And that day, when that day comes, when he come back on a cloud to get the saints that are ready, I want to be ready because I want my battle to be over with. I'm fighting now, but when he come back on that cloud, the Bible says, praise God, he ain't going to come back on earth to get us. Ephesians tells us that. Four, three, look at it. Ephesians chapter four and Ephesians chapter three talks about that. When he come back, he coming back on a, on a cloud. And then when he come back, praise God, he coming back in the eastern sky. Not the western, not the northern, not the south, but he's the Bible say, coming back in the eastern sky. That's where Israel is. Amen. He's coming back, praise God. And they said, the Bible said he's going to call the dead in Christ first. The dead in Christ first. Not the person that's dead, because a lot of people that's dead they in, wasn't in Christ when they died. Let's get that right. I, I, I need to be, I need, we need to expound. Us preachers need to expound on that more. Everybody died, ain't going to rise up that day when he come back. Praise God. But dead in Christ first. And then the Bible said, we that are alive, hallelujah, will be caught up with him in the air. Praise God. Hallelujah. Aren't you ready? Aren't you ready? Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you living right? Praise God. Are you living holy? Praise God before the Lord. Are you ready if he come back? Praise God. Right now. The Bible says he's going to come back in a twinkling of an eye. That's pretty quick. And I don't want to be found getting ready. I want to be ready. I try to live my life every day killing the flesh. Lord, repent. I repent every day. You repent every day? Yes, I repent every day. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can have a wrong thought. That's sinful. You can say the wrong thing. Praise God. Out of context. That's sinful. Praise God. I try to live a holy life. I try to be a good wife, a good mother a good preacher, a good teacher. I try everything I know how, praise God. Lord, crucify my flesh. Help me, Lord God, to live holy every day of my life, praise God. We want to be ready, saints of God. Hallelujah, amen. Is anybody here today, praise God, that want to give their heart to the Lord? Anybody here today that want to say, Pastor Finney, I, I need the Lord to fight some battles for me that I'm going through. Praise God, hallelujah. If you do, praise God, just raise your hand. I can come, praise God, behind you and, and just and stand behind you, praise God, and pray with you. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. Amen. You are dismissed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Hallelujah. That God is still on the throne. Amen. Remember, saints, no matter what you're going through, let's all stand. Let's be dismissed in prayer. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through, God's still in control. He's not left you in this thing. There's some instructions that you're going to have to hear. There's some instructions you've got to receive. And there's a direction that you've got to go. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you notice in that verse that Brother Finney read, I think it's verse 14, the Bible said he routed those men. He routed those, the enemy. He routed the enemy. You know what that means? He positioned the enemy to be in the place where he can kill them. God want to position your enemy to be destroyed. He want to put your enemy in a position to be destroyed. Remember that, praise God. He's got a way, but you got to listen. He's got biblical instructions in that Bible for every one of us to go by. And if we're not adhering to that Bible, that book, we're in trouble, and we're going to always have trouble. Amen. Praise God. We can be in despair. Bow your hearts and your hands with me. Father God, we just want to say thank you this morning. We thank you for the word of God. Hallelujah. How you presented it to us. You gave us biblical instructions, Father God, for to handle our enemy in the day of battle. 
And Father God, these biblical instructions, oh Lord, go deeper than what we even think or can imagine. Father God, I thank you for giving them to me. Help me, Lord God, to fear not. Help me to go back to the Bible. See, this is where we're going wrong. We need to go back to the Bible and read that book and get instructions how to deal with our enemy. We need to go back to the Bible, Lord God, to get instructions on how to live our daily lives and kill the flesh. Flesh is a big enemy right now that we need to put to death. We need to put that enemy to death. Flesh is an enemy we need to put to death. Lord, things that are going on in our life, Lord, Lord, right now, Lord God, is due to flesh. And we need to kill the flesh. Help us, O oh Lord God, to kill the flesh. Help us, O oh Lord God, to kill the flesh, Lord God, Jesus, that try to attack us daily. Help us, O oh Lord, to repent to you daily, Lord God. Show us how, Lord God. Give us the strength in the word. Show us how to pray. Show us how to pray. The Bible said man don't know how to pray as they ought to pray. But Lord, show us how to pray. Keep us, Lord God. The enemy, Lord God, hallelujah, Lord God, may be strong, but you're stronger, Lord God, and you're deeper still, Father God. Help us, O oh Father God, in the name of Jesus, to go home as we go home to our respective places. Help us, O oh Lord, to live a holy week. Help us, O oh Lord, to remember this word that we heard today, how to fight the enemy. The battle, praise God, on the battleground with instructions from the Holy Ghost. Help us to go back to the word, to go back to the basics, which is the Bible, to fight the enemy. Bless us and keep us, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for promotions. We thank you, Lord God, Jesus, for bread on the table. We thank you, Lord God, how you blessed us, Father God. Watch over us and keep us. Hold on to us. And Lord God, no matter, Lord God, what we're going through, you're going through it with us. And you're in it with us. You're in control. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand of praise. Woo, glory to God. He's worthy.